Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at uh, the autosomal DNA results of Salhit. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it is an upper paleolithic woman from Mongolia. Um, her mitochondrial DNA is N, her Y DNA, well she doesn't have any, she's a woman. Let's start with the phenotype, right? So this is her predicted phenotype with Y sec. Don't pay attention to the eye color and hair color, uh, that's very ridiculous. A part of the reason why I'm showing you this is to kind of make fun of YSEC and their predictions. Um, yeah, this is all all completely bogus. Uh, the reason she's getting this kind of a prediction is because BH2, blue eye haplotype 2, was not in her file. So you see, um, let me show you. Uh, yeah, this variation right here was not in her file and um, YSEC phenotype predictor is not capable of imputation. So because of that, if you don't have uh, this variation right here, they're just gonna make you look like this, even though she's a very dark color individual. And we actually, even from looking at this data, we can know that she's a dark color individual. She doesn't have any draft variants here. And this is, by the way, tightly linked to um, this variation. They're located right next to each other, so she doesn't have any light color variants here. And she does not have any light color variants in BH1. She does not have blue or haplotype 1. Uh, just from looking at this, we can already know that th this is definitely not a uh, blonde individual with 95% likelihood of blue eyes, definitely not the case, but YSEC is incapable of imputation, unlike my tool. Okay, the reason I wanted to show you this here actually is because of this, because my um, web version of Nashakot does not print uh, the uh, genotypes, and maybe it will in the future, I don't know if I, if I have the time and I have the motivation to do that, but this is very interesting. She actually has one derived variant in this variation of MC1R, uh, and this has to do with ginger hair. So she has one derived variant for ginger color hair. Let's turn to trait predictor, which is my tool. We're going to start with phenotype once again, just to show you the contrast. Uh, let's start with Nashakot. So with Nashakot, this is her predicted phenotype. She's got light brown eyes. She's got red hair. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Uh, interesting. My Nashakot is, yeah, I don't know about red hair. I don't know what's the there's some. There's got to be something else in her file uh, besides that one variant variation in MC1R that contributed to the score. Uh, and she's got intermediate or dark skin with Nashakot. Her predicted eye color is this. All right, looks like a light brown eye color. Uh, what about um, Oka2 and Herc2 eye color prediction? This takes into account only genotypes in Oka2 and Herc2 to predict eye color. And with this eye color predictor, she's got light brown eyes. Interesting. And the likelihood of like green, blue with amber, or blue is very, very tiny, less than 1%. So let's look at her results for mental health first. These are the monogenic results. She's got AA in Komsvamet variation, meaning met met genotype. Uh, in case you aren't familiar with what this is, the it is the Val met variation in Komt that has to do with warrior versus warrior. Uh, character traits, maybe not so much character traits as like neurobiological traits, right? Uh, somebody who's a warrior is somebody who has um, slower dopamine reuptake, therefore dopamine, more, more dopamine building up in the system and uh, advantages in, in motivation and attention tasks. However, disadvantages in stress resiliency. On the contrast, somebody who's a warrior would have advantage in, in stress, stressful situations, but disadvantage in memory and attention tasks, and that is because they would have less dopamine because of higher, quicker dopamine reuptake. So she is a warrior, um, which means lower activity of the COMT enzyme. She also has TT here in MAOA, which leads to lower activity of the MAOA enzyme. And COMT and MAOA enzymes do the same thing. So she is a warrior in COMT, and she's also a warrior in MAOA. By the way, I need to remind you that this is a very stereotypically European genotype to have. Um, it's very uh, closely linked to ethnicity, like warrior and warrior is, it, it might not, uh, it's kind of counterintuitive to imagine that a, a neurobiological trait like this would have something to do with ethnicity, but it does. Like Europeans are much, much more likely than all the other races of people to be warriors. Um, she does not have any A alleles in TAC1, so normal um, higher, higher, slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites and slightly lower risk of ADHD and alcoholism. Very typical human genotype, uh, not having the A allele here. Um, she's got TT here in T rank 1, below average odds of bipolar and schizophrenia. I just recently added this here. Um, okay, for lactose persistence, she does not carry the European lactose persistence mutations. Nothing surprising about this because 
this lactose persistent mutation came about much much later um she seems to have variants for lower empathy here and variants for lower empathy here but she has gg here which means higher levels of empathy in this oxtr variation most likely not east asian so she's, it's kind of like a mixture between you know higher genotypes for higher levels of empathy genotypes for lower levels of empathy we're going to see her results for diabetes uh she does not have type 1 diabetes that's really the only one we need to uh, look for type 2 diabetes is a lot more polygenic we're just going to see her score uh, with the polygenic scores for that. For Alzheimer's, she does not have any risk alleles for Alzheimer's in APOE. And she actually doesn't have any risk alleles for Alzheimer's here or here, so probably slightly lower risk of Alzheimer's than typical. Um, okay, she's not genotyped for the micro P, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> nothing to talk about here. Uh, TT here, which, uh, which leads to impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete rather than sprinter. Actually, her genotypes for uh, the variants that have to do with IQ are very interesting. So she's got smaller cranium and lower IQ here and lower IQ here. And this one is not determined. I think this one is about IQ as well. So yeah, interesting. What about EDAR? Okay, so EDAR... Okay, that's that's quite fascinating. Uh, this is the main variation in the EDAR that has to do with, you know, derived EDAR, East Asian facial traits, and she does not have any derived variants here. It says likely no shovel-shaped incisors and not East Asian in ancestry. However, there is also this variation in EDAR, which I uh, included to my to my uh, trait predictor, and in this variation, she actually has homozygous. Uh, genotype that's typical for East Asians, likely some East Asian facial traits, most likely non-European ethnic background. So it looks like in, in EDAR, it's kind of a mixed genotype. Some some variants in EDAR seem to be very non-East Asian, whereas uh, some like this one seem to be quite quite East Asian. Uh, she's not an Asian flusher, lower odds of alcoholism and normal risk of esophageal cancer. In case you don't know what Asian flusher is, uh, it's, it's a phenomenon I recently learned that East Asians, a lot of them, when they drink alcohol, like, they can't, their face flushes red, like, they get all red, and they get a lot more drunk from uh, much lower quantities of alcohol than what's typical for, like, white people, and that's called being an Asian flusher, and they also are at higher odds for alcoholism and esophageal cancer, but that's not the case for this Salkit individual, that's not the case for her, um, she is not a carrier for I1B tyrosine as negative occutaneous albinism, not albino, uh, for familiar Mediterranean fever, she does not have any risk variants for familiar Mediterranean fever. Of uh, MTHFR panel, she's got GG here, which leads to no, um, normal homocysteine levels. I can't even pronounce that. Basically, slightly lower than average odds for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease. Uh, she has normal folate metabolism levels. And she actually has this genotype here, also an MTHFR gene, which leads to uh, much lower blood pressure. Interesting. So for the blonde hair and blue eyes panel, these are the um, these are the blue eye haplotypes, right? So she does not have blue eye haplotype one. So this is probably not a European darker colors of eyes and hair. She does not have blue eye haplotype two, darker coloring, um, and that's that's determined from this variation. So let's go back to the phenotype thing. Um, yeah, this right here. So based on your genotype here, we can we can determine that she does not have derived variants here. And uh, it's easy to do. Uh, I don't know why YSEC is not um, imputing. They could do it. It's not that difficult. So she also has AG here, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's interesting because this is typically linked to like blue haplotype 1 and 2, and she does not have either one of those. Uh, and uh, it does lead to intermediate color. Actually, I have the same genotype here as her. Kind of interesting. Uh, she does not have blue haplotype 3, darker coloring, and she does not have blue haplotype 4. Okay, uh, now we're actually going to look at her polygenic risk scores. So for the polygenic risk scores, she's got slightly above average odds of schizophrenia. She's got um, about average odds of type 2 diabetes, and she's got very low odds of Alzheimer's. Now let's look what she scores with my ethnic calculator. Yes, my very own ethnic calculator. We're actually going to compare that result to the G25. All right, for the ethnic calculator, let's open ethnic calculator results, and we're going to see this. It looks like she's scoring a lot more African than everything else, and it does look really wrong, but I think it's not going to be so wrong when we look at the Oracle, because the Oracle does work a lot better than the, you know, this. So let's copy that. Let's put that into, we're going to put that here, 
and we're gonna copy everything else that's going to source and we're gonna go in and put that into here right so she's closest to uh, she's you, you see I told you I told you it would be a lot better um, like if you just look at the result here it's it's kind of really messed up and also the African is always going to be inflated because I'm uh, the score for African is multiplied by three so it's kind of like a technicality but the African score is always going to be inflated so if you see a lot of African in your result it does not necessarily mean you're super African it's just that this ethnicity stuff is not so good compared to the Oracle right so with the Oracle she's closest to Anzic Amerindians uh, followed by Ongia from um, Ongia is um, in South India yeah, and the Manese, right there is an island off of South India that's where these people live uh, followed by Berber Kenya VLH4 Australian native Sri Lankan Uyghur uh, let's see the mixed mode Oracle for her oh okay that's kind of let's me let me change the let's reduce that to five populations all right so if you reduce uh, the uh, the calculator to five populations we see that she's getting modeled as a mixture of Korean uh, Egypt pre Ptolemaic mummy Anatolian Luvian African American and Cotes Neanderthal very interesting result how about we change change it to three populations okay so with our uh, three populations she's getting modeled as a mixture of Korean plus Iranian individual this is uh, just one Iranian guy plus Cotes Neanderthal very interesting Okay, uh, now let's see what she scores with G25. With G25, she scores this. Uh, Nepalese, closest to Nepalese, followed by Maori, followed by Hazaras from Afghanistan, Uyghurs, Nepalese. Uh, and let's see the mixed mode oracle. Uh, actually, make it simpler. Let's reduce it to five. Uh, five populations. All right, so with the five populations, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Maori. Uh, I think Maori are in... Uh, I don't know. Maori, where are they? I think it's uh, Oceania. Yeah, Oceania. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Followed by Ongia, which are in Andamanese Islands. Followed by Shor, Hakasia. Well, there is a little bit of Mbuti here. Look at that. There is a little bit of um, African admixture, actually. That's crazy. What, what if you reduce it to three? Is there going to be African here? Yes, there is African here. Would you look at that? So it's 61% um, Ongia plus 34% Sami plus four and a half percent African would you look at that and on my calculator hold on let me see can I get it to show up as on game mostly let's set this column to this no I can't do it uh, this Nah, wait I, I gotta figure out how to do this okay I don't think with my calculator I can make it show up as mostly on game that's unfortunate that's very unfortunate it, my calculator seems to think it's mostly Korean. Well, uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe. Check out my website. Um, yeah, that's it.